Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. A major day in court in the case in the murder of Zion Foster. Her cousin charged with her murder, but her remains have still yet to be found. Today, Jalen Brazier appeared in court for a preliminary hearing. Good to have you with us here at 5. I'm Devin Skillian. I'm Kimberly Gill. If you aren't familiar with the case, let's go ahead and get you caught up to speed here. Zion Foster was last seen back on January 4th of 2022. Her cousin, Jalen Brazier, would be arrested a few days later. Months later, May 12th, Detroit police announced they'd be searching a landfill in hopes of finding her remains, but they still have not been found. Then back on June 14th of this year, Brazier was charged with her murder. Sean Lay has spent the day in the courtroom. He joins us now live. Sean, take us through what happened today. We have been on the Zion Foster case from the very start, not letting go of it until this family sees justice. Will they find it here? That's the question. Jalen Brazier being charged by the Wayne County prosecutor with no body found in this case. So a murder charge, Zion's remains still have not been found. Very interesting hearing today because essentially the first witness that we heard from was Jalen Brazier himself. He wasn't on the stand. He was on police body camera. They came to his house looking for Zion Foster. He had a lot to say. Take a look. How you doing? Uh, Mr. Uh, Brazier? Yes, Accused killer Jalen Brazier was quiet and mild mannered during today's huge hearing, but his voice loomed large. Prosecutors showing police body camera footage of Brazier in the early hours of Zion's disappearance. So I assume you should come this way because she hasn't been here before. So police arrived at the home searching for Zion because police traced her phone directly to his home. Brazier can be heard trying to joke with the officers. He and his mother suggest more than once that Zion was likely with a boyfriend, not with Brazier. She gave us this address, but everybody else is saying she's our address. And she rests on the road. Her rest is what I'm doing. Brazier later told police that Zion was with him. The two smoking marijuana together, and Brazier says Zion suddenly died. He panicked and says he threw her body in a dumpster. Months later, DPD made the move to search a landfill for Zion, but nothing was uncovered. In those early hours, however, with Zion gone, he told police he was not with Zion Foster. I don't know, it's a lot of weird shit, so I get it. It's weird to meet that. That's right. Now in court, that police body camera, you could hear it a lot more clearly. Uh, Brazier was clear as a bell. So is his mom directing those officers down the street, kept mentioning a boyfriend's name. Brazier hasn't been convicted of anything. He is charged, however, with this murder. This is a long uh, hearing. It's not over yet. About 19 witnesses. More will continue tomorrow. We expect to hear Brazier's conflicting reports then to other police agencies be read in court. Also, uh, it's, it seems in court that uh, the defense will be lining up for an overdose situation, saying Zion overdosed uh, when he was with, when she was with Brazier, but that's something that's going to come out in court tomorrow and we'll be here to cover it for you. Back to you. Indeed, Sean, before you go, the body camera video, that wasn't the only thing we saw today in court. Right after that was uh, Zion Foster's mother. And you know what kind of time she has had through all this. Absolutely agonizing. So she's up on the witness stand. She's finally getting her chance to tell, share her story. Also, however, you'll see at 6 o'clock, the defense puts her daughter right under the microscope about her mental health, about her marijuana use, about what kind of uh, pharmaceuticals she may have been taking. Really difficult for her there to answer those questions as well. Back to you. Mm -hmm. All right, we look forward to your report coming up at 6. Sean, thank you. Some sad news to pass along tonight from the Detroit Tigers. Former player and longtime radio voice Jim Price has died. Team made the announcement today on the field. A Price was part of the team that won the World Series in 1968. And of course, to so many after his playing career, became part of that huge broadcast family as he moved into the booth working alongside Ernie Harwell, Frank Beckman, and Dan Dickerson most recently. Jim Price, just a wonderful, kind man who also did so much uh, for autism, the autism community in Detroit with he and his wife Lisa uh, and Jack's Place for Autism. Jim Price, gone at the age of 81. City of Detroit is doubling down on getting more officers on the streets and in key positions where they're needed the most. 25 new officers are going to join the force. They will help bolster the ranks as neighborhood police officers and members of the crisis intervention team. Victor Williams live with more on this. 25 officers means a lot of money. Where's that money going to come from, Victor? 
Well, Devin and Kimberly, it's all coming from revenue payments from the state and $3.1 million is a whole lot of money, but officials are saying that that's going to equate to more lives being saved. The city is where you always need more enforcement, no matter what. For the first time ever, the city of Detroit will be using part of its revenue sharing payments from the state to add 25 additional officers to the force. This could not come at a better time. As many of you know, late last year we had 300 vacancies in police officers. 11 additional officers will be in the mental health unit, with 14 neighborhood police officers added as well. The money is also going towards the $10,000 pay raises for officers in the department. With uh, today's support, uh, we're going to be able to add 25 in an area we particularly need it. Part of the focus of these officers will be responding to mental health situations. So far, there have been 8,000 mental health runs this year alone. We see that these things are here for us to deal with on a daily basis. We didn't ask for this crisis, uh, but this crisis is on our doorstep, and we have to effectively and professionally manage it. If anything, the progression of the department is already showing in the statistics. The homicides in the city are down 11 percent. The carjackings in the city are down 25 percent from a year ago. It's because we've got the resources to address these issues. It's a major city, so no matter where you go, it's always going to be crime. But to try to get it to contain it. And Mayor Duggan says by next year, the staffing here is going to be complete at 100 percent. So fully staffed for the first time in many years. Victor Williams, Local 4. Yeah. All right, Victor. Detroit police looking into an accidental shooting on the city's east side. It happened after 7 this morning on Hereford near Mack and Kadju. DPD confirming one person was detained in the incident, but no word if anybody was arrested or charged. The condition of the victim is also unclear. We'll keep you updated as we learn more. UAW President Sean Fain pledged a tough stance as the union headed into its negotiations with the big three today. Backing up those words with some tough talk. In an update today, Fain called out Stellantis, saying they aren't playing by the rules. Mar McDonald, live with more on this, not mincing words here, and in fact showing so with his actions, Mara. De Devin, not at all mincing words. As a matter of fact, UAW President Sean Fain going into these negotiations, not as a man with his hat in his hand, but a man with a substantial list of demands, including a 32 hour work week, a return to define benefit programs for workers, uh, as well as in some cases, double digit raises. Let me show you. When we get things like this from the company and they want to sit there and talk about they're not as asking for concessions or looking for concessions, everything they're looking for in this document is about concessions. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do with, with their proposal. I'm going to file it in its proper place because that's where it belongs, the trash. UAW President Sean Fain on offense today. The UAW presented Stellantis its list of demands last Tuesday, making it clear the union is wholly uninterested in any concessions. And he says what the company has returned to them with is nothing but. In his update to all UAW membership today, he called out Stellantis as being the automaker with the greatest profit margin and vowed that record profits should equal record contracts. September 14th will be here before we know it. And my message to Stellantis is very simple. Quit with the games. Stop with the lies. Back here live, September 14th is when those current UAW contracts run out. Interesting to note that Fain has not come in and said that any of these companies is a specific strike target, nor has he ruled out striking all three. The UAW currently sits on an $825 billion strike fund. We're live on Detroit's east side. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Boy, really something, but uh, if this feels like where it's been headed. We'll just see if it keeps going down this road. All right, Mara. Wow. Uh, a few elections being held across Metro Detroit today. Smaller uh, primary election year in Michigan. Here are a few that we're keeping our eye on. In Warren, current Mayor Jim Fouts is not allowed to run again in 2023, but he is suing in federal court in an effort to get on a special ballot. There are six candidates running for mayor there. In East Point, incumbent mayor Monique Owens faces three challengers. It comes amid legal troubles for Owens, who was charged with a felony and is accused of fraudulently applying for COVID-19 money. We have a full breakdown of all of today's races and proposals. Just go to our website, click on Detroit.com. All right, let's turn our attention to the weather. Live look outside from our Mount Clemens Sky Cam. We had 
God, yesterday was so gloomy and dreary, and yeah. so feels that much better today to have the sun yes. shining, but we do have a little more rain headed our way. So let's get over to Kim Adams and uh, what she's seeing on Exact Track 40 radar. Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim and Devin. Hi, everyone. Well, we've got just one little area of rain on Exact Track 40 radar, and it's just outside the airport. Just a quick downpour uh, right around Willow Run. Uh, Nothing to be concerned about, no thunderstorm or anything like that. But there are a couple of showers and storms now crossing Lake Michigan that we'll be tracking here over the next few hours. Not everyone gets this rain. They'll be widely scattered. But between about 7 and midnight tonight, there could be just a couple spotty showers. So if you are headed to the Tigers game, just know that we can't 100% rule out there wouldn't be a raindrop or two. But again, it would be very quick and then move out. 73 degrees by 10 o'clock tonight. Let's talk about temperatures because we're a solid 10 to 15 degrees warmer right now than we were at the same time yesterday. City airports popped up into the mid 80s, 80 in Pontiac, Lapeer, 82 in Port Huron, and also in Mount Clemens, 79 Ann Arbor, 79 in Jackson. Tomorrow we go right back into the 80s. In fact, we're even above normal with a high of 86, but tomorrow won't be rain free either. We'll talk about timing in just a couple minutes.